Hey guys, so here we are, guys. I got my amazing brother here, uh, Dr. Darren Boyer. Darren, thank you for ha coming on tonight, man. I really appreciate it. Oh, it's an it. honor, man. It's an honor. <laughs> Finally, you get to come on with the famous Nelson, man. <laughs> come on, man. I, I'm finally here with the famous Darren, man. You came that one time. <laughs> I was like, guys, if you don't know, he he may not look too tall sitting in that chair, but that guy is a giant, man. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like a giant teddy bear, man. I feel like uh, I told you when uh, – when I met you, and I think I told you on the phone the other day, I said, I see such a heart of a father in you, man. <laughs> yeah, and that's true. I'm guilty. Guilty as charged, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Super big, loving man, but very fierce when it comes to the devil. So, Darren, before we dive in, man, I would love for you to just tell us a little bit about your story. I know you have a crazy testimony, very unique um, to, to most people. And, and so I would love for you to share your story with us before we even talk about anything else. Sure. And I'll, just for time's sake, I'll try to abbreviate it. Okay. But to make a long story short, I've been a pastor for 30 years. Uh, for 28 years, I was a pastor in the Methodist church. I was raised Baptist. I was uh, indoctrinated by the Presbyterians and the Christian church. And uh, so I've been around churches for a long time. And I've been to their seminaries. I pastored their churches. Uh, but something very unique happened to my wife and I a little over two years ago. Uh, we both got uh, baptized in the Holy Spirit, which doesn't happen. It doesn't happen for pastors who have been in the ministry for so long because we're not open to those kinds of things. But I had a hunger in me. I wanted something. I wanted more of Jesus. And as I kept pressing in and praying for more of Jesus, I kept hearing, you need, you need the filling of the Holy Spirit. And so we found a couple from Iowa that actually met us on a snowy night and they prayed over us and we got filled with the Holy Spirit within minutes. And this incredible language started coming out of our mouths. And I'm telling you, it was a game changer, a game changer. When I went back to the church, I knew that some people weren't going to like what they hear, what, you know, my testimony, they weren't going to like what they wanted, were going to get. But I knew that I had to tell them. So I began to, to just tell people and people would start coming to my office saying, I want this also. And uh, and so what would happen is a couple of things. I would have people coming that were seeking to be filled with the Holy Spirit. But also people would all of a sudden start manifesting demons in my office. And, and I didn't know what to do except cast them out. It was uh, It was just an incredible thing. But I was so hungry for Jesus that when they would come into my office, these demons would just start getting agitated and, and things would happen. And so I've been doing this now for about two years, a little over two years. And uh, sometimes it's easy. Sometimes they come uh, and start, you know, twisting and contorting and such. But most of the time it comes when people say, you know, I got something wrong in me. There's something not right, an addiction or a bad habit or behavior I can't change. And they're like, can you think the Holy Spirit can help me here? And I basically uh, would just say, well, let's do a, a spiritual MRI. We'll just pray over you, over your body, and we'll just see if anything shows itself. And so in, in praying for people, all of a sudden, I've noticed that things started showing up in people. And uh, so I had a couple of interesting things that would happen. I would have one, I'd have people say, is it possible for a believer, for a Christian to have a demon? And I said, you know what? I've never met a Christian that didn't have one. And that's a true statement. I have never met an adult that did not have a demon. And, and that includes deacons and elders and pastors and bishops and, and everyone else I've ever met. Everyone has at least one. Come on. So it's just been crazy. But yeah, God has really been, we sent us down to Dallas two years ago because my church up in Illinois didn't want us anymore. And so we <laughs> resigned. But when we left, the church was 50% spirit filled and 50% hate filled. <laughs> and so we left. <laughs> came to Dallas and now we just set up a tent and we just, uh, we just, uh, pray for people whenever we can. I mean, it's been amazing. Come on. That's awesome. <laughs> and so it's a, it's a funny story, you know, kind of like what you said, right? You, 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 um, you never met somebody who didn't have a demon. That's very interesting. Right. right? Really? And so, come on. And so a lot of people don't realize, but a lot happens one, when you get saved two when you get baptized, I mean, there's deliverance happening yeah even in your sanctification process often that most people don't even realize. Right. Would you agree? Right. Absolutely. Right. I've had over 20 come out of me in the last two years. 
Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about um, sort of your journey into deliverance. Like how, how did you even get started? I, I know sure. you just shared a little bit when you got filled with the Holy Spirit, but I, it sounds like and it seems like you're doing that a little bit more now um, than you were before. Or oh, tell me a little sure. bit about that. Well, and really, the first exposure I ever had to demonic spirit happened when I was in seminary in the late 90s. And, and in the seminary, we had a music festival that we hosted in Kentucky. And, uh, and I was asked to be an altar counselor. And uh, to make a long story short, this, this woman came to the altar after the service. And just some weird distortions started happening in her personality and in her appearance to where I thought there's something going on here that I, it's over my over my head, out of my pay grade. So I found a woman who I knew was uh, Pentecostal and I asked her if she would minister to this woman. And I was just staying about 20 feet away, just praying for them, not knowing what was going to happen. And all of a sudden this woman started shrieking and, and these things started leaving her. And, and so that was my introduction. And then about 10 years after that, I was pastoring a church in Peoria, Illinois, and a woman in the church invited me to the hospital to visit her in the ER um, because she's having some kind of a breakdown. So I go into the emergency room. I sit next to her bed and I notice that she is chained to her metal bed. Mm. And I thought, this is not normal procedure. Mm. And so uh, the doctors and the nurses, they all left and they closed the glass doors. And they said, you take as long as you need, Pastor. You do whatever you need to do. And so (laughs) I'm like... I don't know what to do, but this woman, she was like half passed out, half conscious. And so I thought, well, I'm just going to pray over her. So I put my hand up in the air and I said, Lord, just show me, how can I pray for her? How can I help her? And about that time, this woman looked at me and with a man's face, she roared and she said, you can't have her. And it scared the hell out of me. <laughs> and I went, I went back to my office and I was shaking. I was so scared. I didn't know what to do. I knew what I saw. I knew what I heard. And I was not prepared to handle that. Wow. So I grabbed the first book I could find on the topic from Bob, uh, Bob Larson. Oh, wow. I don't even remember the name of the book, but I started reading it. So I'm like, I got to figure out what's going on here. And, and so I started learning about how demons work and how they influence people and, and how they hide and such. Now, all of that was put on the back shelf because I never saw anything else for about uh, seven or eight more years. Wow. And and that was after my wife and I got baptized in the Holy Spirit and uh, actually encountered a a, a demon come out of my wife. And uh, it it, it just scared me, but it was also, it angered me. And I thought, if this is the world that I live in, I've got to figure out how to help people get free from this stuff. Because these things are wicked, they're they're destructive, they're evil, they're they're disgusting, and and they're pathetic. I use the word a lot of times pathetic when I talk to demons, because they really have no power, they have no truth, they have no no authority. It's just, but yet we still let them control us. Come on. And so, yeah, so there's been a, a series of little events that God has used to lead me up to this point. And, and then as, at, at some point two years ago, he just opened my eyes and says, okay, now this is what's really going on. Wow. And I think he's going to do the same thing with a lot of people in this room tonight. He's going to open their eyes, their spiritual eyes to see what's really going on in the spiritual realm today. Mm. Amen. Amen. So, yeah, man, I, I, I mean, go ahead and just dive right into that. Just kind of give some people some, some insights. So you, so you started, you ran into two major encounters with demons that, so it's funny, a Methodist preacher had to go get a Pentecostal. <laughs> Side <Yeah. note. laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. You got to love them old Pentecostal Holy Ghost people, right? <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. They were weird, but they had the power. So we had to That's go to right. them. <laughs> they did. They always had it, but mm-hmm. we were always taught to be afraid of it. We were taught that 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 is not of today, that the spiritual gifts are not for today, uh, the cessationist theology, we call it, but that the, the Holy Spirit ceased working like that in the year 70 AD when all the uh, apostles died. And so I thought, OK, the Holy Spirit is not available to us anymore. I mean, wow. we get it when we're baptized, but that's it. Right. Yeah. Crazy. Had no idea how much more there was out there, man. And how many years were you stuck like that? 
28 years as a pastor. Oh my gosh. Oh, so believe guys, I've done a lot of repenting, man. A lot of repenting. There's a lot of hope out there for all these uh, dry dirt pastors, right? I'm <laughs> There's still you, hope. There's a way out. <laughs> I'm telling you, and this is another thing I've had to learn in this process as I never had any respect for the angels. I just figured from Hebrews one that the Hebrews are less than us. And so I just kind of just disrespect them. I just didn't even pay them any attention whatsoever. But now that I'm doing deliverance and, and when I say, okay, holy angels of the Lord, hold their arms down. And I'm seeing the person with their arms out and they can't move them. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is real. Yeah. And then when I say yeah. angels of the Lord, this demon is not cooperating. Pierce this demon with your sword and the demon starts to roar. Yeah, <laughs> And I, I've had to repent to the angels and wow. say, guys, I am so sorry for not believing in you and not understanding who you are. Mm. And, and it is just an amazing experience. That is amazing. And I've seen that before, too. Um, just it's amazing in just how angels yeah. operate in deliverance, like because a lot of a lot of Christians, they never experience angels operating with them. Right. And the reality right. is, is because a lot of Christians don't do anything for them to do. Like don't have any, act, like they don't got nothing right. to do. I, I, I don't been, need them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so I got saved in 2012 and in 20, I think 13 or 14, when I started moving in deliverance, I started moving in deliverance like three months after I got saved, like boom, filled with the Holy ghost, just would touch people. Demons would start screeching. Ah, you know, yeah. <laughs> I would hate. I, now I had, I didn't know how to do deliverance at the time, right. but but the Lord's revealed to me around a year after when I was doing that, he said to me, he said, you know, a lot of my, this is kind of what I felt the Lord was talking to me about because I started ministering with angels and I didn't know if it was right. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you kind of right. like, am I supposed to pray to angels, you know, talk to angels, know, not pray right? to them. You know, am I supposed to do that? Right. And then I read, I read Philip. He was led to the Ethiopian eunuch yes. by an angel talking to him. Yeah. And so, and I was like, what? You could just talk to angels like that? And so, um, side note, I, I, just to share this testimony because it talks about deliverance. Um, I was in, where was it? Awaken the dawn, which was, it was an event done in Washington, DC. Okay. And, um, I ended up praying for this lady who was a Christian FYI, and she started manifesting demons right there in the, in the grass outside. Yeah. Right. And, um, and I started praying for her, you know, commanding the demons to come out as like a Python spirit or something like that. And she's like manifesting. And then out of nowhere, Darren, on my right hand, I felt another hand grab my right hand. And then mm -hmm. it was like, and then in the spirit, I saw like a fireball, like just appear. Yeah. And I was like, whoa, what is this? And then um, I had said in my head, or I had said, angel of the Lord, get her. And then I heard a voice say to me, I move when you move. Yeah. But it was not the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And it was not demonic. Right. That the angel said to me, I'll move when you move. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what? <laughs> and so I so yeah. I was so I was there with a friend and she's on the ground manifesting. And I, I started testing it out. I was like, and every time I waved my hand, she would go, you know, start. Yes. Electric. Yes. And I was like, me and my friend just looked at each other like laughing because it was cool. You know, mm -hmm. it's pretty fun. And right. so then and so I said, OK, what's the purpose of this fire in my hand? And he said, when the demons come out, pick her up put your hand on her mouth and she's going to fly backwards and speak in tongues. So like, I had like, it like, he didn't say it word for word. I just saw it. And I was like, right. You know, ah, dude, she's going to fly backwards. So I said, yeah. okay, cool. So I commanded the demons out. They came out, you know, with a roar, with a roar or whatever you want to call it. Um, then I said, okay, come on, get up. We're going to fill you with the spirit. I told my friend, get behind her. She's going to, she's going to go flying, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and so I put my hand on her mouth. She goes flying like Amazing. just flying <laughs> mm -hmm. she lays out on the floor starts screaming in tongues on the grass yeah. like just screaming in tongues and then gold this gold glitter just appears in her hands all the way down her hand like this gold what i call gold dust the glory dust whatever people want to call it and um and man just this gold just appears all over her and, and we're like, what is going on? Just the Holy Spirit moving out in the mm -hmm. grass, in the open air. Right. And then a news station saw what was going on and came and recorded what was happening. Interesting. But I, I only bring that up because of the angel interaction. And yeah. so, yeah. But it's powerful, guys. You can minister. The it angels is. are waiting. Out. Oh, this is the yeah. term. Angels unemployed. 
a lot of them are unemployed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, Amen. we need it, we need to employ them, give them because we play do. we live our lives too safe. Exactly. And they don't <laughs> they don't care for safety, you know. Yeah. Uh, but there was a time in the in my living room here, I was doing deliverance on a guy who had been in the military. Uh, served eight years in uh, Afghanistan and Iraq or whatever he was. I don't know where exactly, but he had killed a lot of people. He actually was Pentecostal from childhood, was wow. going to seminary. And he said, I joined the army because I wanted to kill people. So here he is now saying, I've got stuff attached to me, right? So we're doing deliverance out here in the living room. And, and at, at one moment, he sat up in the recliner and he screamed at me with this demonic voice that gave me chills. And he wow. said, do you know who I am? And with the snap of a finger, something behind me got inside my body and said, do you know who Jesus is? And that demon had fear come over its face. And within five seconds, we cast it out, man. It was wow. amazing. Wow. And I'm like, something behind me came in. I didn't even have to ask. It just like, it's like, no, this is my turn. I'm going to step up now. Wow. It, it just was amazing. The most incredible thing I've ever experienced really was the most incredible thing right there. Wow. Because I felt like I heard the voice of God speak that day. Come on, man. <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> that is so awesome. There's so, I'm sure you got some of the craziest stories. So for how many years uh, straight, like, have you been doing deliverance on a consistent basis? Uh, two, two years. Two years, yeah, yeah, and I've That's I've awesome. done about a, a little over 150 right now. Crazy. I've God. been doing lately. I've been doing um, about uh, seven to ten a week. Wow, amazing! And most okay. of them take about um, two to four hours. And I've done some on on video. I've done some on video chat. Mm. I've even done some on the phone. But it's amazing. The Holy Spirit can do anything. Yes. Yep. Yep. We just yeah, have to I had, believe in it. I had that happen just the other day. Um, I was on the phone with a friend of mine. Uh, I think it was her aunt on the phone. And I started praying. And then I started casting demons out of her. She got delivered. She started like in her chair. She was like, you know, getting delivered yeah. of demons, you know. And so it's just amazing what guys with the Holy Spirit does. And so let, let, just to lay the foundation of all this, when it comes to deliverance, what is just the simple thing you need to know and believe when you're casting out a demon or addressing a demon? Mm. We have all the authority. Now, here, here's something I've been running into a lot lately uh, that it bothers me, but this is a stronghold, is that these people, you know, we, we most of us will have our demons from childhood. And so they'll be attached to us. In my case, I'm 57. You know, some of mine were there well over 50 years. Wow. And, and so what happens is we get convinced that I have to have somebody special to cast out my demons because my demons are are powerful. And that's a lie from hell. Every demon is weak compared to the power of the Holy Spirit. That's you right. don't need anybody special. You just need somebody with faith to believe that God is who he says he is, that Jesus is the son of God and the Holy Spirit lives inside of us. And that we have the authority to exercise in his authority or in Come his on. name. And, and so once you have that, you know, that, that really sets the stage for victory. Mm. But I get people that come in and they're like, oh, no, you can't. You can't take care of my demons because mine are tough. Well, the reason they're tough is because you haven't repented yet. You haven't you haven't renounced your sinful ways or, or you haven't torn down your mental strongholds. Right. And so that's the only reason your demons are powerful, because you're still holding on to them. You're still cohabitating with them. Come on. <laughs> you know, but that's something we run into all the time. Mm hmm. And this is what I tell people, too, is like, so I know we, we talk about can a Christian have a demon? So I'll put it like this in most cases. And, and maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong. In most cases, I say uh, a Christian can have a demon, but a demon can't have a Christian. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And so yeah. and, and, and this is kind of how demons operate from my experiences. They operate on agreement. Right. They do. The whole spirit realm operates on agreement. Right. Yeah. Two give two touch and agree. Everything is established. Right. And so, you know, right. whatever you ask in my name, you know, pray this way. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. You agree with his will. Let it be done. And so your agreement, yeah. whether with the demonic or the heavenly, you know, 
your agreement gives mm -hmm. permission. That's why you said you can bind and lose, right? That's, and that's what becomes the stronghold in your mind. And you have to tear down that stronghold and start thinking biblically, not, not in your flesh. Come on, come on. And so for some of the people watching, um, kind of, I know you, you kind of, you have so much experience in this. I kind of want to just let you share on deliverance on how to be delivered. I think somebody asked a question here. Um, let's start with that. How can, cause this is such a controversial question. We know we we know some ministers that can, you know, make it controversial and mm -hmm. have one argument over the other. And it's like, okay, let's talk about this. How can a quote unquote Christian have a demon? Yeah. Yeah, and there's a there's a lot to say about that one topic, and I'll just say it this way: mm -hmm. everyone that Jesus cast demons out in the Bible were believers. If they were not believers, they would not have come to him in the first place. Even Legion saw him at a distance and ran to him and threw itself at his feet and said, "Have mercy on us." And so there there has to be this this acknowledgement uh, that. We believe in Jesus. We believe that he has this ability. Um, mm. So they're all believers that he he exercised, uh, that he cast the demons out of. Now, here's the other thing. We use that term Christian very um, loosely because the, the believers in Antioch were the first ones called Christians. So no, Jesus never cast a demon out of a Christian because no one was called Christians until Antioch. Mm -hmm. All right. And that was that was a long time later. But here's the real here's the real problem. A Christian, by definition, is someone who is Christ like. Now, I think it was John 14 that said this. Uh, the devil has nothing on me. In other words, because he has nothing on me, he can't influence me. Come on. Man. The problem is we all live in the flesh. We're, we're believers. We've been baptized. We've been spirit filled. But we are still in the flesh. We still sin. And so it only takes one sin for a demon to attach to. It takes mm -hmm. one traumatic experience that we have not confessed to the father that the demons can attach to. And so we're broken people. We're not Christ-like yet. We're mm -hmm. trying to be. So we're disciples. We're disciples in training. Come on. But we're not like Jesus yet. And mm -hmm. so, yes, it is very possible for us to have a spirit of a, a demonic spirit in us. But the devil cannot possess us. Mm -hmm. It can influence us. We can be demonized but it cannot possess us. I heard Pastor Robert Morris say it this way. Mm. A Christian can go out on a Saturday night and drink excessive amounts of alcohol. Now he can get out in his car and drive home and get pulled over and he can be under the influence of a substance. Mm. That doesn't mean the alcohol owns him. It means that he was under the influence of a foreign substance. And the same is true of demon spirits. We, mm. can, we can allow them in through our sinful behaviors and through our, our lack of uh, uh, repentance. Mm -hmm. But they will only influence us as much as we let them. That's right. Now, here's another thing I'll have to say from experience. The only way to get rid of a demonic spirit is to cast it out. Now, here's the other thing, and I'm going to reference it to this. Mm -hmm. Jesus did a lot of miracles on the Temple Mount. The Temple Mount was still the temple. But in the Holy of Holies is where God's presence was. And no one evil, no one sinful can go into the Holy of Holies and be, because they'll be struck down. That's why mm -hmm. they tied a rope around the priests and pulled them out if they were struck down, right? Mm -hmm. So in the Holy Holies, you don't mess with the presence of God. But then you have the inner courts. In the inner courts, you could have some dirt. You could have some filth. If you look at the map of the temple, there's a leper's closet mm. close to the inner court there. Uh, the lepers would go there to worship in secret, but well, not in secret, but in isolation from the rest of the worshipers. The leper's closet. It's in the temple. That's where illness and, and disease is. Wow. So that's uncleanness in, wow. in the presence of the temple. Now, Jesus did a lot of miracles on the, the gate that led into the temple. Uh, he healed the sick. He cast out demons. But here's the greatest story. Jesus entered into Jerusalem and he found the money changers who were who were manipulating the people and they were stealing from those by, you know, buying their 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 sickly lambs and selling them big, fancy, beautiful lambs for more money and making a just a lot of profit. Jesus said, my father's house should be a house of prayer. 
And so not a den of, th of robbers, right? So he turned over their tables and what did he do? He cast them out. He cast them out with a three strand cord of Ecclesiastes 4.12 and he drove them out of the temple, off the temple courts. Wow. And so we have to understand that, yes, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit, right? But we have an inner court and an outer court. Just like we can have a cancerous tumor growing in our brain or, or in our lungs, we can also have a demonic spirit that is like wrapped around our midsection, squeezing us and making our intestines hurt and, and causing us breathing problems. And yes, it is very possible. It's mm. not only possible, it's probable that, that even believers can have demonic spirits. Come on, man. Come on. That's so good. And, and I did this, um, I did a teaching on, I think it was episode five. Um, I talked about the body, soul, and spirit, right? Amen. And so what Amen. I tell people is like, when you get born again, your spirit is born again, right? Because that which is spirit is born, uh, born of spirit is spirit. Amen. And so the spirit of God births us and we become born again. And so then, yeah. so what I tell people is like, your spirit's born again. Your spirit's redeemed. Your spirit is made perfect, just, justified in Christ, right? Made right with God. But then your soul is your mind, will, and emotion that still needs to be yeah. renewed, still needs That's to be true. sanctified, still needs to, you know, you need to crucify the desires of the flesh. When it talks about the desires of the flesh, it's talking about your soul, yeah. <laughs> right? And, and so that's where if your mind, your will, and your emotions are in agreement with something demonic, whether through the practice of sin, whether through right. certain mindsets, ways you think, then the devil's like, I'll sit right here in your soul and- yes. It becomes like a puppet with strings. And next thing you know, you have these, these thought patterns. They're like, where are they coming from? Like, why am I thinking like yes. this? Or, you know, why am I entertaining that? Why do I find myself doing these behaviors that I shouldn't yeah. be doing? Would you agree with that, Darren? Absolutely right. And so Absolutely right. The spirit is born again, but it's in the soul and in the body that the demons can have influence and access to. Right yeah. now, the good news is the Holy Spirit's in you, man. Amen. <laughs> like Amen. you got the solution right in there. <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, also, as you as you continue to learn how to walk in your faith and in the spirit and you get closer and closer to the Lord and this fire starts to burn in you more and more and more. You can imagine where the demons they're going down into your legs. They're going down into your arms. They're trying to get away from the heat source, but they're mm. still there. Mm. Come on. And so, so how, how does, um, so this is a good question. How does a person know that they're demonized and how can they identify yeah. it? Well, one quit, one way that you find out is by getting closer to the Lord, because as you get closer to the Lord, they're going to get agitated. Uh, but the other thing is most people, they don't know. They don't know one because they were taught all of their lives. It's impossible for a believer to have a demon. So they've accepted it. They've established the stronghold and now they're in bondage and don't even know it. I think it was John eight. This is a great passage mm. where Jesus says, if whoever sets you free or if the son sets you free, you will be free. Indeed is what he said. You remember that verse, right? Mm -hmm. So the Jews said collectively to him, what do you mean? We've never been in bondage before. How can you say that we will be free indeed? And if you think about it, wow, they were in bondage for 400 years in Egypt and they didn't recognize they were in bondage. And now presently they were in bondage to the Romans and, didn't and they were crying out for a savior to deliver them. They were living in bondage and they didn't even know it. Wow. And what Jesus was, of course, referring to was you live in the bondage of sin and don't know that you're in the bondage of sin. Try breaking an addiction. I don't know if, these, if our room has ever been addicted to anything. I was mm. an alcoholic for years. Wow. And, and I could not quit, could not quit. But the day that I accepted the calling into ministry, just a snap of a finger, the alcoholism dis dissipated. Wow. It was never there. I never went to treatment, never went to 12 steps, mm. Mm. Um, but God just zapped it just like that. Mm. Praise God. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I, I was delivered of uh, pornography. You know what I'm saying? Me too. I was you there know? too. Yeah. <laughs> and so like that, that was an addiction. It almost enslaved mm -hmm. me, man. 
it, it was a, it an evil task mask master, right? That, that brings nothing but guilt, yeah. shame and condemnation. And it was like, I couldn't, I couldn't, like, I didn't want to, but I did it. And then shame yeah. hit. Right. And so, um, eventually I realized one, I realized the pattern Two, I rec, I identified the source. Um, and the source came from certain, uh, emotional issues deep down in my heart, you know, certain, certain wounds and different things like that. Um, as well as it was a generational curse because it came yeah. from, you know, my father, et cetera. And so I had to, I had to say, you know what, I'm not agreeing with this. Right. Yes. And so I began to come against that thing. I am not agreeing with this. I am yes. not a, you know, addicted to this thing. And I just began to break agreement. And then as I did that, those things just began to leave me. And right. then the desire is just gone. You know what I mean? Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, so here, here's here's some things to know, uh, which answers that question, but also takes it into a segue into the next section. Yeah. Uh, when I do deliverance for someone, uh, we'll say that, that Bob Smith comes to me for deliverance. He doesn't know if he needs it or not. He doesn't know he has anything or not. But what he does know is this. He might have an addiction. He might be struggling with depression and might be suicidal or he might have uncontrolled anger and he just keeps blowing up at people for no reason. Or it could be a plethora of other things. Mm -hmm. So when he comes to me, I start off with a, with particular steps because I also have a counseling degree as well. And, and, I've, and I find this is helpful. First, I go through and break all generational curses and generational sins. Mm. I think that's absolutely huge. Now, some people have said to me, uh, there's no such thing as a generational curse. I said, well, OK, I can under understand your logic on that to some degree. But here's the thing. If I believe I have a generational curse, then I do. Mm -hmm. And so it still has to be dealt with. It's, it becomes a stronghold, but it has to be dealt with. So once we break off all generational curses and generational sins, we rebuke them, we renounce them, and we repent if necessary. Mm. Then we go into the next step, which is self-curses. Mm. Self-curses is one of the biggest areas I run into. And this, this gives the devil free reign over your life. And it starts by answering this question. Powerful. Fill in the blank. I am blank. How would you answer that question? People will say, I am old. I am fat. I am ugly. I am stupid. I will never find a, a person who loves me that will marry me. I will never have children. I have health issues and I'll never get healthy. I have bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, depression, anxiety. Uh, fill in the blank. Every one of those are curses. Yep. And when you repeat those, you're developing that stronghold and you're creating this thing in your mind that cannot be tore down even by an act of God. You have to tear that one down yourself. Yeah. Yeah. That is so good, man. And you know what? That's actually one of the biggest. You're absolutely right. Because Amen. which goes right into what I'm saying. Agreement. <laughs> it is. It's all about agreement. It's all about agreement. Whatever you speak and agree with, as a man think it's in his heart, so he is, yeah. right? And then whatever you decree, it is established. Like, guys, the, remember Jesus said this. You, Jesus said, my words are both spirit and life. Amen. I believe because we're made in his image and his likeness, almost every word we speak yes. is spirit and either life or unclean spirit mm -hmm. and death. Right. <laughs> And that's why I said earlier that deliverance is not about power. It's not about who's the strongest. It's about truth. And mm. so you take the truth of scripture and you compare it to the truth that you believe is up here. And you Ooh. start thinking, okay, my identity is really found in Jesus Christ. I am who he said I am, not who uh, my children said I am, or not who the neighbor said I am, or my enemy said I am. Certainly not who the devil says I am. Come on. Because God created me in his image. Mm. Come on, man. And ye shall know the truth. And, and the set truth you free. shall set you free. And obviously Amen. truth is a person, right? But watch yes. this. Understand that that truth as a person being Christ, you are now identified under him. Right? Mm -hmm. Because that's, the, that's one of the biggest issues, right? Is what people believe about themselves, identity. Right. 
if you understand you're identified yeah. with Christ and his sufferings, when you understand that you're identified with his resurrection and his glory, you understand you're identified with his life that justifies you just as if you never sinned, right? When you get your identity in him and you renew your mind to that and you break your yes. agreements, those those things just they they don't they they come they off do. like 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 loose chains, you know? Right. Now Karen asked the question, can someone else break a self curse off? We can help you with that process, but ultimately you have to do it yourself because, and you have to believe it. You can't say I am a child of God. You have to believe that you are. You can't say I I'm okay. I, I, I don't think I'm really stupid. That doesn't sound confident. You have to say, no, I'm not stupid. I'm intelligent because God gave me the mind of Christ, you know, Come so on, man. you have to, you have to claim it yourself and you have to believe what you're saying. Uh, and here's how I know if the devil is still holding on, then you haven't done it adequately. Mm -hmm. This is also true of forgiveness. If you really haven't forgiven someone for hurting you, then the devil will stay. If you haven't repented of an addiction, the devil will stay. And if you are continually walking in agreement to what the psychologist said, that you're schizophrenic, then you're not going to get free and you're not going to get rid of your devil. Come on. And if you keep taking the medication for it, it just reinforces it. Now, I'm not telling anybody not to take your medications. That's between you and your doctor. I'm just telling you, if, if God cures you of your mental health disorder and the devil of schizophrenia leaves, you're not going to feel the need to take that pill anymore. That's right. That's good. No, that's very good because, again, you can agree. So a lot of people can agree. Um with something vocally, but in their heart and actions, they're not in agreement. Right. Right. I mean, vain words don't do anything. Right. <laughs> like, right. like even Jesus says, don't be like these heathen who just say vain repetitions and right. ah, they think that they're holier than thou. And he's like, no, like it, it's either, it's either authentic mm -hmm. or it isn't. And if it isn't authentic yet, then pursue Christ in that revelation. Right. And, and so what would you say for somebody who says, you know, I want to, I, I, I'm saying it, I don't believe it. How can you get it from, from speech to revelation? How, how would you advise that person? Yeah, they have to keep repeating it and repeating it until they believe it. Just like you have to keep reading the scriptures, memorize it, take those verses, put them on three by five card, put it on your mirror when you're brushing your teeth, keep reminding yourself of who you are in Christ. That's that right. will break that, that will break it. Yeah, it, it's huge. It is so amazingly huge. Amen. I'm 100% in agreement with you, man, because I can I can identify so many parts of my life where, I mean, I remember um, kind of like lust or um, even anger or, I mean, geez, so many different things <laughs> that, I, must, that yeah. I dealt with. What I yes. would do is I would seek the scriptures to find verses that identified with that issue. And then I would just memorize those scriptures, sometimes have them in index yeah. cards, memorize them, uh, recite them throughout the day. Right. The Bible says, you know, he who meditates on his word day and night, you know, uh, will be like a tree planted by the rivers of living water, right. you know, and bearing fruit in season. And so when you meditate on his word day and night, you're renewing your mind, you're setting your mind free. The truth shall set you free. And the truth gets ingrained in you because the word of God is like right. a seed. <laughs> right. And so you get that seed of truth in you. You begin to water that thing with prayer, with consistency, right. right? Consistently treating that thing. And then that truth grows forth and brings forth that freedom. Yeah, um, yeah that's good. And and taking every thought captive is, is tedious at first until you get used to it. But when you, when you hear, hear a thought in your mind that is suspicious, such as, um, I'm always going to be single. I'm never going to find anybody to love me. You instantly take that thought to the, to the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, is this truth? Is this a true statement? Do I need to believe this? And the Holy Spirit will say, say, well, uh, does it sound like something I would say, or does it sound like something the devil would say? Come on, The man. devil whose purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy. Does that sound like something he would say? Or do you think it sounds like something I would say when I love you and I have, will bless you and I will walk with you and I will multiply you? Uh, which is a true statement here? Mm -hmm. And so we really have to, it'll be tedious at first until you get in this pattern mm -hmm. of, you know, I just, I know the voice of God. I know the truth of scripture. I know that the devil 
uh, hates me, but I know God loves me. It's a no brainer. That's so good. Yeah. And in another, just one more thing on self curses, because that's massive, man. I found that, oh, I mean, that's almost not, if that's not 90% of it, I don't know what, what the actual percentage is, Yeah, but <laughs> I mean, self curses, of course, other people giving you word curses, right? There's that, that too. Happens too. Yeah, if we believe so, it. If we believe it. There you go. Yeah. Again, agreement. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's all about agreement. And here's the thing. You cannot cast out a curse. Mm -hmm. You have to break a curse or lift a curse, but you cannot cast out a curse. The devil comes in when you speak a curse, he attaches to it. And now he says, I'm going to make this become a true statement. With me, with, with me in your life, you're right. You will never find anyone to love you because I'll make sure of it. Wow. That's powerful. That's powerful. You know, I confronted a witch once um, in, in high school. Um, I was, <laughs> once, once so far. So, well, that was that was the first time, I think. The first one. There you go. <laughs> yeah. But back in high school, man, um, I started, you know, the Lord started activating me in the supernatural a lot um, and, and started turning up the anointing. You know how like the Holy Spirit sometimes just turns yeah. it up a little. Well, the devil turned up the, the warfare. Right. And so. Oh, yeah. So next thing you know, in high school, you know, I was leading, I was sparking revival in my high school. And then out of nowhere, a transfer student came in and she was a psychic. She was a witch. Oh my. She did palm readings, tarot cards, all that stuff. And she was a transfer student and immediately made a grand entrance, like started reading people's palms. People were supernaturally drawn to her. And oh, literally, yeah. literally, Darren, there were lines of people in the middle of a school day in yeah. the hallway getting their palms read where was it. the where were the police uh the the, the school cops because we had school cops it was a bad high school <laughs> yeah. where where were the, the the teachers the principals where were they they right. they had a crowd of people getting their palms read in my high school and when yeah. and my and my it's funny my muslim friend who i've been i was slamming him with the gospel right. um he heard about it and he was like Yo, Nelson, there's this girl reading people's palms downstairs. Mm -hmm. I got up out of my class. I said, what? <laughs> I looked at the teacher. I said, teacher, I'll go to the yeah. bathroom real quick. <laughs> That's right. So I, I did go to the bathroom, so I didn't lie. But then I went downstairs right after that, right. and I found her. And I went up to that corner where she was reading people's palms, and I began to open air preach right in that high school. I began to say, Amen. I said, the only reason she can tell you about your life is because you got demons in your life. Amen. <laughs> and I said, Amen. the same demons are whispering in her ear talking about you. You guys need to repent. Right. And I began to preach the gospel. I done messed up her whole little show. They all started Amen. following me. <laughs> yeah. But but here's and that, I'm going that stuff is mm -hmm. so innocent, but so wicked. Oh, yeah. And here's where I'm going with that. Um, I had uh, I had confronted that her in that moment. Then she uh, I confronted her again in the hallway because she got upset with me. Right. Because I had, you know, yeah. I, did, I ruined her little show. Um, and so she comes up to me, starts trying to, like, you know, say some stuff. And then I and then I told her I said and then I began to correct her because she was deceived, too. She thought she was doing something good in her own eyes. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and so I began to uh, just talk to her. And I, and I told her, I said, what you're doing is of demons. You know, the, the, the voices you're right. hearing, the, the, the things you're hearing, it's all, those are demons teach, telling you those yeah. things That's because true. she had gotten an impartation from a, a witch, but right yeah. before the witch died, she laid hands on her and said, you, you know, now yeah. you, now you take it. And uh, so she thought it was like her special gift or whatever. Yeah. Um, so anyways, I'm trying to correct her. She starts getting, starts manifesting. The demon starts manifesting, right? Just, mm -hmm. uh, cause I was, I said, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to that thing right there. <laughs> you know? right. And, and then, um, and then some girl walked over and she was like curious. She, she had heard about her doing the hand palm reading stuff and agree. And she said, can you read my palm? And I looked at the girl and I warned her. I said, mm -hmm. Hey, you know, which what you're doing is you're literally giving your hand to the demonic. You're going to open the door for demons right. to come and do whatever she's it, whatever she speaks to you, you're opening the door for the devil to do it. Right. So check yeah. this out. So she, you know, they went into the bathroom so that I, you know, I couldn't influence it. They, they were, I was in the hallway confronting her about like five minutes later, the girl runs out of the bathroom screaming, <laughs> like freaking out. Yeah. And so she probably, probably just threw up in the toilet. Right. Just crazy, you know? <laughs> and so then, um, then, well, th this girl, the psychic had 
prophesied to someone or prophesied, like I like to call it. Uh, she, the, you know, demonically prophesied over this person and said, you're going to get in a car, you're going to get hit by a, a bus or something like that. Right now, what happened? That person actually did get hit by the bus. Yeah, so what was, was that? Curse. There you go. She put a curse, a curse on her. She believed that she came in agreement with it. So the devil yeah. was like, got it. Right. Oh, yeah. And so what people don't know is that these these satanic people, these people yeah. operating out of a spirit of divination, they can say something like you said, that can become yeah. a truth statement. Oh, yeah. Because well, let me the tell you this, this story. Mm -hmm. I was doing deliverance on a teenage girl. Uh, she was a senior in high school. Incredible basketball player. Uh, she had the strongest physically speaking, the strongest demon I've ever encountered physically. It was incredibly tough. Took four of us guys to hold her arms down. Wow. Um, but the, the demon inside of her was looking around. There's about five or six of us present and went and said, you have a lust spirit. You have you have weak faith and you, brother, you're going to have a child and nobody knows it. And none of us knew that he had just gotten his girlfriend pregnant. The Ooh. devil knows things. The devil knows things. <laughs> I'm telling oh you. <laughs> so you're telling me that thing looked at him and said, you got to listen to that. Wild, yes. man. And he, he knew it, but his own family didn't know it. Wow, man. Yeah. That's crazy. It is. So. So that see that's why you got to live a clean life, man. If you're gonna be doing, you do. <laughs> don't you don't do. have no unconfessed sin. You need to get that thing out. That's good, man. Right, and wow. that's why when I when I do deliverance, I like to have another person, at least one, who is a discerner. And mm. so when when we're going a, a, to a person and we're like, all right, you need to confess your sins, you need to repent, you need to do this, you need to do this. A lot of times, people will think that they can hide stuff. Mm. They can hide stuff from God, right? Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, we were doing deliverance on a guy in Denton, Texas, mm. and uh, he was um, he was uh, alt, uh, autistic, mm. highly functioning, autistic, very smart. But he kept trying to get ahead of us. But anyway, uh, the discerner would say, uh, God just revealed to me that you have a problem with this. And he's like, how did you know that? Well, the Holy Spirit told me. And then he would go a little bit further. And I said, God, would God just told me that you do this. And he's like, how do you know that? After four hours of, of doing all of this, uh, trying to get him ready for deliverance, uh, I asked him another question. I said, there's something you're hiding from us. And he actually said this. I might as well go ahead and tell you, because if I don't, the Holy Spirit's going to tell you. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> that, that's good stuff right there. That was cool stuff. <laughs> well, that's exactly yeah. how it's supposed to be, right? Because I mean, the reality is nothing is hidden from the sight of the Lord, right? Yeah, I mean, the Lord absolutely. sees all, all things. And so, especially when you guys, when you start moving in the supernatural like this, you know, you can't really hide yeah. anything. So with that being said, you yeah. just touched on something powerful that you said, getting him ready for deliverance. I want you to talk about yeah. how mm. can these viewers get ready to be delivered? Yeah. And here, here's the first thing to remember, folks, is that uh, it's not the deliverer's job to get you completely set free. We're a Come tool on. that God uses to help you in this process. But really, you have to be your own best advocate. Come and on. so you have to understand that you can't come and say, well, I don't believe I, I, I don't believe in this. Because if you come, you're wasting our time because you're still living in agreement with the devil who wants to who doesn't want you to know he's there. Yeah. All right. So, so once you come to a place where you're like, you know, I think I have something going on and I want freedom from it, then we can start the process. But then it, it, it's a process of denouncing all of your sins, repenting of your sins, confessing all of the pain and the brokenness and the traumatic experiences of your life and putting everything on the table and saying, I don't know if this is relative, if this is relevant, but I want to deal with this stuff right now. And I'll tell you this. Young lady in Puerto Rico, Teresha, a mm. beautiful lady, had all kinds of stuff going on in her life. Is that uh, the we video? Were the, yeah. Okay. We could show yeah, that she, right now. She was one in the, in the brown dress, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Teresha, she did not know what the hang up was, but the dev devil wouldn't leave. And if a devil doesn't leave, it's not because he's powerful. It's because he's hiding and he's attached to something. Mm. So in this case, we're like, all right, Lord, show us what we're missing here. 
And in the interrogation process, the demon said to me, I said, who are you and where'd you come from? And the demon said, Jezebel's babies. Mm. All right. So Jezebel was stealing babies that they were sacrificing to Moloch. Yeah. That's miscarriages. Wow. Also, uh, you know, abortion is is uh, allegiance to Moloch. So if you've had abortions, you're opening the door for Moloch to come in. But in this case, the devil said Jezebel's babies. So I said, Teresha, come back up, come back up. Teresha comes up and I said, Teresha, have you ever had a miscarriage? And she said, yeah, I've had one or two. And so we were able to repent of that, to acknowledge it. Not that she did anything wrong, but just to repent that she was trying to hide it and laid it at the Lord's feet. And afterwards, Jezebel's the next one to go. Come on. So just know that if you're holding back at all, that devil has permission. It has legal right to continue to mess with your life and it will continue to hide from you. Wow. That's amazing. That's amazing. Um, so do you, you want to give a backstory? Cause I, I think this is a good time to, uh, so uh, this is a good time to share that video. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Let's show that one. And this yeah. is just a small clip. This ended up taking about three hours at the, in Puerto Rico. And, uh, and then a week or two later, I did a, a video for two hours where we got rid of even more demons. She had about, this is no exaggeration, 16,000 demons in her. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a record to me. I've never seen that many in one person. But, wow. but with the things that she had been through, it's not surprising. 16,000 wow. demons. Wow, that's powerful. So this was on the rooftop in Puerto Rico. <laughs> yeah. Well, the traffic is driving right by her house. Yeah. Come on. So let's go ahead and uh, let me add this to the stream. All right, guys. So get ready to watch this one. <laughs> this is fun. Yeah. The blood of Jesus oh, no. is covering her. Out. Out. You're defeated by your own admission. You're defeated by your own admission. You are defeated. Yes. And Jesus is Lord. Get out. Release her now. Holy angels, send her peace. Release her now. The love of Jesus yes, cast out we are fear. Surrounded by angels. All fear has to go in Jesus' name. Yes. The love of Jesus drives out fear. Yes. The love of Jesus has set her free. Yes. You have nothing to say about that. Mm -hmm. How did you get in? Mm -hmm. How did you get in? I know you manipulated your way. How did you get in? Tell me. You already know you're defeated and you're going in the pit of hell. How'd you come in? Tell me. Of course. But you have been canceled, haven't you? She canceled all generational curses and generational times. That's awesome. Yeah. So, and you'll see the angels of the Lord were holding her arms down because she, they kept threatening to hit me. Wow. So, so you commanded the angels, go ahead, grab her arms. And she yeah. just ah, couldn't do nothing. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> praise yeah. God. Praise God. So that's one video. So that was for her. And you said she ended up getting set free from like. Yeah. And she's hours. doing deliverance ministry in Puerto Rico right now. Praise God. Yeah. So you cast them out, get her filled, baptized yes. disciple. Amen. <laughs> and this yeah, was we right had actually, got baptized. We actually baptized her in water before the deliverance. Yeah, I, I saw the pool there. I figured yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, um, she which, was awesome. Which leads to a subject. Um, when doing deliverance, um, how does uh, baptism play a role in, in deliverance? Well, now this is also, I mean, people may disagree with me and that's okay. I'm just going to tell you what I've experienced and what I know. Mm -hmm. For 28 years as a pastor, I baptized people into church membership. I taught people that it was a symbol of what Jesus did for us when he died on the cross, was buried and rose again, but it was just a symbol. But here's what I actually find in reality. When we have gone through a deep repentance and confession prior to the baptism experience, when we die to Christ, and we don't talk about it as a symbol, but we're saying you're actually dying to your old self and we're gonna bury you in the water, all of that past washes away. And when you come up out of the water, you are a brand new creation in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. 
Come on. All right. Now, this is why this is significant. A demon spirit has to have a body in order to thrive. Mm -hmm. uh, without a body, it can't do anything. But a demon spirit can't be attached to a dead body. And mm -hmm. when the body is buried into the water and you come back up out of the water, the demons go running because they don't know what to do because their body is now dead. Mm -hmm. You're a brand new creation. Come on. And so now that I know this, I baptize people with a baptism of repentance. And then we baptize them in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Wow. But it's that been life changing for me. And I've seen amazing results of it now. Um, unfortunately, as a pastor, I had to do a lot of repenting for how I treated this whole subject matter for 28 years. Wow. But luckily, there's a lot of grace in Jesus Christ. And Amen. he continues to, uh, to use me in spite of my past. That's amazing. That's amazing. I get emotional when you share that, man. You know, <laughs> man, I, I cried. I cried so much, man. Every time I thought about it, I cried. I remember Torben, my friend Torben. I, I cried to him one day as a Torben. Is there any grace or mercy for a person like me who did this wrong? And he was like, brother, there's always grace and mercy. Always, always. <laughs> hey, man, yeah. and you talk about Torben from TLR, right? Yeah, he's a good yeah. guy. He's awesome, man. I love him. Praise yeah. God. So awesome. So getting ready to get delivered. One of the things you shared about how to get ready is hide nothing, essentially. Right. Right. Yeah. You have to renounce your sins. You have to renounce the things that have happened to you. You have to repent and confess. Mm -hmm. And you do, you just have to lay it all out on the table and say, I want this so bad. And, and, and then you start praying uh, arsenal prayers. You start praying prayers of renouncing prayers of forgiveness. And you just do it over and over and over until you believe that something is letting go of you or that you're just being completely purified by the work of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And then I'm telling you, your deliverance will be a piece of cake. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely agree. And somebody asked earlier, is self-deliverance a thing? Sure. Yeah. And, and everybody I know, Alexander Pagani, Isaiah Salvador, uh, all, all the people I know who do this regularly, they will say that the first time you go through deliverance, you need to be assisted. You need to be uh, guided through the process. But after that, yes, maintenance will need to occur. You'll need to do self-deliverance maintenance. Uh, my my mentor, Don Dickerman, uh, does it every single night before he goes to bed. Wow. He'll go through and say, Lord, if there's anything in me, I pray that you'll forgive me. If there's anything that I have done, show it to me. Let me get it out of my head, out of my heart. I don't want anything hindering me. And doing your work. Amen. Yeah. And I have, I have a friend who does that too. And so yeah. that leads to another question, right? Self-deliverance, you know, so you said that initially get assistance. I agree with you. Yeah. Um, secondly, self-deliverance maintenance, which leads to this. So once delivered, can they come you back? Stay clean. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question because this one is another one. I believe that the devil lies to us. Mm -hmm. But that Bible verse that says that when a demon leaves, it goes to arid places and it comes back with seven more uh, to join it, right? Mm -hmm. What that passage actually says is when a demon leaves, meaning when the door is open and it can come and go as it wants, it can, it can do whatever it wants. It can bring in buddies. It can bring in an army with it. It can do whatever it wants because you have an open door or an open window that gives it access. Mm -hmm. However, when a demon is cast out, it cannot return. It is an unwelcome guest. But there's also implicitly the concept that you close the door after it leaves. In other words, quit the sinning, quit the addiction. Otherwise, you're opening yourself up for it to come back with seven more of its buddies. And you don't want that. And that's why we never do deliverance on unbelievers. Because it's just opening them up to having a worse condition than before. Mm. Deliverance is a ministry for the believers, period. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Jesus said uh, deliverance is the children's bread, right? The children's and so, bread. And that, and that, what was it? The Seraphonician woman, she counted herself by her faith. Yes. She was amongst the children of, of, of Israel, right? She yeah. became a part of the flock, right? And yeah. so I, I absolutely agree. I mean, I'll tell you this. I made mistakes, man. In my initial starting of deliverance, you know, yeah. I uh, 
I cast demons out of people just because I could. <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, I would too, because at the end of the day, we really don't know where a person's heart is with the Lord. Right. We mm -hmm. just don't know, but yeah. we do need to be somewhat careful. But yeah. Yeah. If, if I see a demon, I'm going to jump on it no matter what, you know? Oh yeah, for sure. I'll take names, <laughs> take names later. I know. Right? <laughs> and so that's what I would do, man. I would hang out with my friends. I would just be hanging out with them. And this was in high school yeah. guys. All right. So I don't know what, you know, whatever age you guys are watching, it don't matter. There's no junior Holy ghost. And there's also yeah. no uh, high school version of a Holy ghost. It's the same right. Holy ghost. Right. And so I was in high school, man. I would hang out with my friends. I remember um, one night I was, uh, it was like, I was, I was just spending time with Jesus. So everywhere I was like, things would just happen. Right. Because you know, you're with him. So, and then uh, I remember I was hanging out with some friends and I would just say, father in the name of Jesus. And next thing you know, bodies hit the floor. Boop, boop, boop. Yes. And I'm like, what is going on? And then some of them started slithering. Some of them, their eyes got all yeah. black. I was like, what is going on? <laughs> and then yeah. I, I, and I cast the demons out of them. But at the time I wasn't informed on how to keep them free. Because, and so some of them ended up a little worse. <laughs> that was, yeah. I repent. And, for that. and, and Shania just asked a good question. I think it's Shania. Um, can you get a demon casting demons out of other people? And I, I believe absolutely not. Yeah. I believe you can't because the power of the Holy Spirit is working in you and it's working through you. And I'll tell you this. There was a time I was playing, praying for a woman that had a lot of demons in her. And I had my hands on both sides of her head. And one of my hands started vibrating like this real hard. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. That was where so I tried flinging it out of my hand. You know, so what is going on here? I put my hand back up and immediately it started vibrating again. And later that night I was praying, Lord, what was that? And he yeah. said, a demon was trying to get into you, but the Holy Spirit was resisting it. Mm. And so I, it was just one of those weird experiences. But no, I don't think you have anything to worry about as long as you continue to close your own windows and doors also. Mm. But if Amen. you try doing deliverance with a with a like a, a perversion in your own spirit or an addiction in your own body, um, you probably should wait until you've conquered that addiction anyway. Yeah, no, that's good. That's good. Um, Cheyenne is saying I feel uneasy coughing a lot. Mm. Which one? Oh, Cheyenne is. Or no, I'm sorry, Cindy. Cindy Dark. Oh, Cindy. Yeah. Okay, that's all right, Cindy. That's part of the process. Yeah. Uh, uh, so there was something else I was going to say, and I just forgot what it was. Oh, here's another thing. To mm -hmm. understand from Ephesians 6 that there is a hierarchy of demons, and the way this is important, or the reason this is important is this. A lot of ministries that will say they do deliverance ministry have a ministry of casting out the minions, the little foot soldiers. All right, so when you're in worship service at church and you've got you know something coughing up or something spitting or something uh, uh, stirring, uh, yeah, the, a lot of times the pastor will cast that out, but that doesn't mean you're you're set free. It doesn't mean that you're completely free. Let's say that because there's different tiers, just like in the military, you have privates, corporals, sergeants, you have lieutenants and captains. Yeah. So you have this hierarchy, this rank system. All right. So the devil, let's say that there's a, we'll say there's a Python spirit inside of you and he's like the, the one in charge. He's the strong man. He is not going to show himself. He is not going to let you know that he's there. He's going to hide as long as he can. So Come he's on. going to take those little foot soldiers and throw them out to make you think that you're getting completely set free. And then after about two hours of that, then he can rest because he knows you're going to go home because the pastor's tired. All right. So deliverance ministry bypasses the foot soldiers. And we dig into the upper tiers of that particular structure inside of you. And so it's not unusual for us to take your, your history and your curses and your, your generational stuff and, and compile a list of suspects that we might think are influencing you. And so I will, I will just, once I set the stage, I will say, okay, I command the spirit of so-and-so to come up right now. And, uh, and if the Holy Spirit says you're right on, then I'm going to keep doing it until I get a response. Mm. But sometimes the Holy Spirit will say, no, 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 not that one. You need to go to this one. And then we'll go to a different direction. Mm. But just know that if you've been to church and you've had one or two demons cast out, 
that doesn't mean that you're completely free yet. And you're going to know by your behaviors, your attitudes, your addictions, um, your ability to enjoy worship, your ability to read the Bible and to get something out of it. Uh, there's so many criteria that you have to be aware of. Yeah, no, that's good. That's good. I don't know if I, um, yeah, I did ask that question already. Sorry. <laughs> I'm just, oh, trying, <laughs> I was going to ask, how do you know you got one? But I think we already covered that. Um, I hear, so somebody asked this one. This is a, an interesting one. I hear some people say something in the nature of demons transferring. Yeah. Um, that's, that's just something that I've never encountered. Um, mm -hmm. I know that there's a passage, I think it's in Timothy that talks about that. And it talks about when you're laying hands on someone that something could be transferred to you. Uh, for one thing, I'd say maybe less than 10% of the time do I ever touch the person that I'm doing deliverance on. Not because I'm afraid of getting something, but it's because it's not necessary all the time. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it helps because when I, when I lay hands on somebody, the Holy Spirit is coming through my hands into that person and it's agitating those demons. Mm -hmm. So when that's happening, I have no fear whatsoever that something's going to come into me. Yep. I would say this, that if you're not sure and you're a little bit leery and you don't have the faith, don't touch him. Yeah. Yeah. Just don't sure. do it. No, I agree with you. And I mean, I think that scripture in Timothy is uh, what is uh, talking about ordination, right? Um, yes. Lay hands on no man yeah. suddenly, lest you share, partake in his sins. Meaning, you know, right. don't, you don't want to put your stamp of approval on a guy living in adultery, right? Like you don't want right. to, you don't want to ordain a guy who's literally living in adultery or living, you know, a double life. Right. So lay hands on no man suddenly. So that's really the context of that scripture. Exactly. I've heard, right. Yeah. I've heard people use it for the transference thing. I put it like this, kind of like you said, Darren, if you believe it, it works. If you yeah, don't agree, you with it, if you don't believe it, it's not going to work. Greater is the one oh, in you true than you in the world. You know? Yeah. Like if, if people actually come in and I've seen this happen because I've dealt with this, this problem before in deliverance where someone's with me and they're like, oh, don't touch them because mm -hmm. it's going to transfer. I'm like, Get behind right. me, Satan, you know, <laughs> I'm like, right. you, you know, you got to renew your mind. Like greater is the one in me than he that is in the world, you yes, know, and you and have Jesus, to believe it. Yeah. And so, you know, and Jesus said, lay hands on the sick, you know, you yeah. know Jesus didn't run away from the lepers. He touched them. <laughs> yeah, absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's so much truth to that. And Leslie, our, our friend, Leslie, who we both love. Uh, Leslie's awesome. Good to see you, oh, Leslie. Yeah. She asked a question about what do the names like Python and Leviathan represent? Yeah, there mm. she is right there. Um, yeah. That's a good question. And one that is kind of another pet peeve of mine because I have so many. But what happens is, let's say that, that, again, Bob Smith is getting ready to come in for deliverance and he's been doing some research. So he's watching Isaiah Salvador and it was Alexander Pagani and maybe uh, Zadai and some others. And so he comes in and he's like, all right, I think I have this one, this one, this one, and this one. All right. Well, it's possible. But how about if we lay your, your list aside and we just let the Holy Spirit reveal what's there? Or let's uh, start attacking the demons on the inside of you and let's see who shows themselves. OK, now we know this. Leviathan, a lot of times is connected to pride and arrogance. Yeah. And you can read about him in Isaiah. You can read about him in Job also. Uh we also know that, uh, for example, Kundalini spirit, I've experienced that one so many times that comes in a lot of times through witchcraft and also through false worship and drug use. Mm. And that one is, is another serpent that can be kind of fun to deal with, right? We know that Jezebel has a lot to do with deception, man-hating, um, can go all, all, all day on, on, on Jezebel. Lilith mm -hmm. is one that you have to be careful of because Lilith, a lot of times, who's more crafty than Jezebel and usually mm -hmm. higher up the totem pole, Lilith, a lot of times, will hide behind Jezebel because mm -hmm. she knows that you're going to spend more time looking at Jezebel and you're going to ignore Lilith. Uh, Lilith has a long history, been around a long time, Wow, uh, can be a little bit more crafty. Lilith usually is involved with perversion and sexual stuff. Mm -hmm. Um and that's just to name a few of them. Uh, you can find uh, angers of, of death and destruction with uh, Abaddon or Apollyon. You can, you can find all kinds of categories. One of the things I do is, is uh, when a demon says, for example, 
I'll say, how did you get in? And it'll say through fear. I'll say, well, fear is not your name. It's your function. Mm -hmm. I want to know what your name is. And so they might say, my name's anger. No, that's your function. They'll say witchcraft. No, that's your function. I want to know what your name is. Once you have their name, it's a little bit easier to call them out. Not, not that it's, it was hard without it, mm-hmm. but it does make the process a little bit easier. It's just like, you know, if my mom, I had five brothers. If my mom goes out the back door at dinner time and she says, okay, time to eat, who's going to come running? But if she says, Darren, time to eat, I guarantee I'm going to come running, right? Right. There's power in knowing the name. And Mm. a lot of times demons won't want to give you those names and you don't have to have them. But Mm. I found that if I can get those names, then I can usually figure out how they got there, how long they've been there and how to get rid of them permanently. Yeah. And I like that last word you just used there permanently, because I was going to also I was just about to ask you. You know, is it necessary to know the name? And I think we can both agree, no, right? It's not necessary. Mm -hmm. It's beneficial. And kind of Mm -hmm. the reason it's beneficial, kind of like you said, is because then you know how it got there and you know how to keep it out. Yes. Right? Absolutely right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that's what's important, right? Like, because one thing, again, like I said, I made the mistake where I cast demons out of people and I didn't know how to tell them to stay free, right? And so, yeah. uh, you know, you guys don't want to make that mistake. So you kind of want to know, like, okay, why are they there? You know, how did they get there? And then how can we keep them out of there, right? And so right. Um, we got a lot of, of, of questions. People are asking some good questions. Are you, are you they good are with great. these? Yeah. I like the one that Marianne just asked. Can Lilith possess more than one person at a time? Here's the thing. It's not just Lilith, any demon spirit, because I run into this all the time. And I'll tell you a cool story about this, too. Mm-hmm. Uh the way it it's makes it's been painted for me, I think is Alexander Pagani that used this, that you take like a spirit, we'll say a spirit of Jezebel. And it's, mm-hmm. it's this, this powerful spirit of Jezebel. And there's a bunch of little, a little uh, dangly Jezebel spirits that come off of that. And those little dangly spirits are the ones that you'll find and maybe a million people at one time. Mm-hmm. It's not the actual Jezebel but it is uh, connected to Jezebel in behavior and mood and that type of thing. So yeah, it is possible for more than one person to have the same demon. There have been times, for example, that I will go and I'll say, uh, Abaddon, didn't I just run into you yesterday? And the spirit will say, no. And I said, well, I just met Abaddon yesterday. And the spirit will say, that wasn't me, but they had the same name. That's a possibility. But let me yeah. tell you this one, because Abaddon is, is, is an item of, uh, of topic here, for me anyway. When I went through deliverance two years ago, the deliverance ministry I went through in D- Davenport, Iowa, identified that I had an Abaddon spirit in me, which was a death destruction demon. Uh, Abaddon in the Old Testament is Apollyon in the New Testament, and he is the one who is the gatekeeper to the pit of hell. Wow. All right. So anyway, this devil had been trying to destroy me my whole life through suicide, through drinking, through whatever, just crazy behaviors, right? When that demon came out of me, it was in the back of my head and it was just inflicting serious pain on my neck and my headaches. And it was just terrible. But once it left, I finally felt free. Fast forward two years. I'm in Prosper, Texas about two months ago doing deliverance on a woman and this demon Abaddon comes up. I called it up by name. I said, okay, Abaddon, are you? No, I said, demon, you tell me your name. And it said, my name is Abaddon. And I said, interesting. I said, do you remember me? And the demon like looked me over and said, no, I don't. And I said, well, let me remind you. Let me refresh your memory here. Two years ago, you were cast out of me and you had been present in my body for nearly 50 years. I said, Abaddon, today you've met your maker. And, and this demon started screaming and, and just angry. And it said, I hate you so much. I want to kill you. And I said, you should have done it when you had a chance. <laughs> so isn't it interesting that in the circle of the spiritual life, that God cast a demon out of you and you come around full circle and you're now in face to face with the same demon. Wow. I mean, not the, not the identical same, but this one knew who I was. It knew me by name and it knew that I had beaten it through this deliverance ministry before. 
that's powerful, man. It's crazy <laughs> stuff, but it, it that was one of those feel good moments. Yeah, yeah, just kind of like, nah, you met your maker. <laughs> <laughs> well, and this that was a time when it wasn't one of my best moments because I became prideful. And when I became prideful, the devil, this demon said, why don't you just go ahead and send me to the pit? And I said, oh, no, I'm going to keep you around for a little bit because I'm going to mess with you. <laughs> and I should never have done that. You just don't mess with demons. You just don't. Yeah. But in that moment, it was almost like God said, go ahead, go ahead. You can jab him a couple times, but then get <laughs> rid of him. Right. Yeah, that's good. That's good. I mean, I get it. I mean, sometimes we have fun with it when because, guys, it's pretty cool when you're doing deliverance like. It is, yeah. It is fun. It is cool. It's kind of like getting a new toy. Right? <laughs> the, yeah. the, just the power and authority. That's why, you know, that's why Jesus had to correct the 70 when they came back. Yeah. They're like, Jesus, the demons obey us. He said, relax. Right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> relax. He's like, it, 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 they obey everybody, right? You know? Yeah. He's um, like, <laughs> he's yeah. like, just rejoice that your name is written in the book of life, right? Uh, so, yeah. you know, that that's that's funny. I want to address one. Um, and I, are you okay with these uh, these rapid fire questions? Oh, I love them. Yeah. Okay, cool. Because, you know, these are questions that sometimes people have to go really deep into finding answers for. Um, somebody said, and, can and that doesn't mean I'm going to have all the answers. But, uh, right. but yeah, this is how you you expose the darkness is by talking about it. Exactly. And so uh, Letitia said, can a spirit be shared between spouses? Mm. Mm. Letitia, I'll tell you this. I don't know if that is from my experience. I don't know, but I it probably can. But let me tell you this, I've been running into a lot of this lately. There's there's a, a very strong presence out there called spiritual spouses. And, and these are demonic spirits. A lot of times they partner with Incubus and Succubus. A lot of times they will partner with Lilith. And they will come into the night and they will have relations with the male and the female. Um, they can be homosexual spirits. They can be straight spirits. They can be... Uh, very lustful and very perverse. Um, those are very hard to break, not because they're powerful, but because they've been visiting the person for so long that the person feels like they actually have a healthy relationship with a demon spirit. And that's that's the epitome of perversion. Yeah. But yeah, I, I would say, Letitia, it probably is possible, even though I haven't seen that yet. I don't understand. I, I wouldn't know why it couldn't happen. Yeah. Yeah. And then this person said, like, right on that scale, can there be a transference through sex? I always uh, taught. I was I was always taught that they can transfer through sex. Soul ties have to be cut. Yep. Soul ties have to be cut. Spiritual spouses. Everyone I've encountered was was birthed through a romantic relationship. Um, an inappropriate romantic relationship, because if it happens outside of marriage, it's inappropriate. And so, uh, and, and then what happens is the demons even take that guy's name or that woman's name, and now they become a spirit of those people. And yes, they were transferred through sex, but now they have gotten out of control. They've gotten inside your head, inside your heart. Um Yeah. It's a very ugly situation, and I'm just shocked that it happens, but it happens a lot more than I ever thought possible. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's why you guys need to, again, like, if if the if the enemy tries to impose himself with a dream like that, like, I'll share, I'll share a quick uh, story, because I actually got attacked with this thing before. Uh, like I said, I, yeah. I had struggled with uh, pornography in a period of my life, and yeah. uh, I had gotten attacked in this dream where with this perverted dream and i was like what the heck is going on like what what is this about and it was right after i had spent so many times so much time in prayer and uh you know in the word of god and i said well, god what is this what's going on and then i asked the lord uh you know well, how did this thing get get the right to even do this and then the lord reminded me of a dvd that i i totally had forgotten about that was hidden in my closet somewhere this was back in high school and yeah. uh um and and so anyways so i went in so i went into this closet and then i saw oh my gosh this is there like i had forgotten that that even existed mm -hmm. in my closet and so yeah. i had taken this thing i i went outside i said in the name of jesus 
I rebuke this thing. I break my agreement with it. This thing is not, I have no agreement with this. I have no ties to this thing. Yeah. I repent and I renounce this thing and I broke it. I stepped on it, tore it apart and then threw it in the trash. And I never got attacked with one of those dreams again. And so sometimes yeah. maybe you can agree with me. Sometimes deliverance happens by getting rid of objects. Oh, absolutely. They can attach to objects. They can attach to houses. Mm -hmm. and absolutely. So yeah, objects, houses, uh, relationships in regards to association, photos, right? Stuff that you have saved. Uh, yeah. so listen, soul ties and things like that. You got to break all that stuff. So, guys, you know, there's so many things we can address uh, here in this place. Yeah. Give me one second, guys. I just unplugged my headset. And I just saw Mariana's question, which is a really good one. Mariana, here's the problem. If you're walking around spirit-filled people and you're starting to get shortness of breath or irritation or anxiety... It's because there's a demonic spirit inside of you that's getting ticked off. And that means that you need to you need to have somebody pray for you and get rid of it right away. Amen. Amen. Yeah, absolutely. So get somebody to, uh, you know, just pray for pray over it, cast it out. Amen. So, guys, those these are all good questions. I want to share with you guys. This is probably going to be part one of a deliverance yes. series that I'm doing. We should do it again. Yeah, we absolutely could. I mean, you know, with the amount of experience you have, Darren, and, and, and just kind of all the years and all the different things, I think it is so beneficial. So, guys, here's what we're going to do. OK, we're about to do a prayer of mass deliverance. I'm going to have Darren lead us into this prayer. Guys, there's so many questions. I wish I, we could answer them all in one video, um, right. but we can't. So we're going to you know, we, we handled a few. Um, Darren, do you want to go ahead and just lead these people into a prayer yeah. of mass deliverance? Um, I'm here. 100% with you. I'm just going to be okay. praying in tongues. I'm going to mute myself and I'm going to let you lead this. Is that all right? Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Okay, guys, get ready, guys. All right. Now, this is the way I run a deliverance session. So first, I'm going to pray that the Holy Spirit will just come upon all of you and give you peace and surround you with his living presence. And then I'm going to shift and you're going to notice a shift in me when I go from the prayerful me to a more confrontational me. I'm going to actually pick a fight with the devil. And, and, and hopefully we'll pick a fight with every devil inside every one of you, okay? So this is what we're going to do. You all just close your eyes and keep your eyes closed as I go through this prayer. And I'll tell you when it's okay to open them, all right? All right. Holy Spirit, please come into the house, into the room of every person that's in these chat, this chat room right now. Holy Spirit, we call on you to, to bathe these folks in righteousness, to bathe them with peace and to fill them, Lord, with your presence, with your living presence. Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit will flood their souls and that they will feel the warmth of the Holy Spirit as you come into their bodies, from the top of their head to the bottom of their feet. Fill them with a loving presence, the warm, loving, good presence of your, of your existence. I pray that you breathe peace into their bodies. I pray that you will wrap your loving arms around them so that they will feel loved and protected and that they will know they're in your arms right now. I pray that you'll help them all to relax. And I invite them all just to relax into the arms of Jesus. And I come against every demonic spirit right now, every demonic spirit on the inside or the outside of every single person in this chat room. I come against you with the full authority of Jesus Christ. You know I have possessed this authority. You know that you cannot resist it. I come against you in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, devil, here's the, uh, here's the instructions of how we're going to do this. I take the sword of the Lord and I cut you off one from another because you are not going to draw strength from each other. You are not going to help each other. You're not going to communicate with each other. You're not going to talk to anyone else, any demon spirit in this room, in your community, or in the house that you're existing in right now. Devil, I cut you off from one another. I cut off all of your demon powers. You cannot use any of your resources to fight or resist. I command you that you are not going to leave and come back. Once you're cast out, you will never return again. I command that you will not hide from me. You'll not get on a shelf. You'll not hide in a shaded closet. You are not going to hide from me. You're not going to hide from the Holy Spirit. Devil, I know that you can see, and I invite you to look around your rooms. You're going to notice angels of the Lord are, are stationed in every single home that is represented in this chat room. 
the angels of the Lord had their swords drawn and they are ready to protect any of us who are involved. They are there to enforce the rules that I have spoken over you. And they are there to escort you straight into the pit of hell if you resist. Devil, I come against you and I remind you that you're not going to cause confusion. You're not going to cause, cause doubt. You're not going to create double-mindedness. I bind you all in the name of Jesus Christ with the three-strand cord of Ecclesiastes 4.12. I bind you tight in the name of Jesus. Now, every demon spirit present, I command you to come up right now. D anxiety, I command you to go right now. You're going to get up and out right now in Jesus' name. You're going to go straight into the pit of hell. Depression, you're going to get out right now. You're going to go straight into the pit of hell. I ordered in Jesus' name. Schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, I command you out right now in Jesus' name. Every spirit of suicide, every spirit of suicidal ideation, every spirit of self-harm, I command you to go now in Jesus' name. Release the captive now and peace is coming over them right now in Jesus' name. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will flood the souls of every person on this list, that you will bind every spirit coming against them. Perversion, masturbation, pornography, addiction. Every one of you have to release these people now. I command it in Jesus' name. Devil, let go of them now in Jesus' name. Every spirit of gluttony, I command you to go. Every spirit of fear, I command you to go now. You will get out in Jesus' name. I bind every spiritual spouse, every perverse spirit of incubus and succubus that is attaching to these people at night when they're trying to sleep. I come against you with the full authority of Jesus Christ and I command you to go now. I command you all to go now with coughing, with sneezing, with burping, with vomit. I command you to come out right now, up and out with vomit, with dry heaves. I command you to go right now. Devil, you get out of these people right now. You get out of them now in Jesus' name. You have been defeated on the cross of Christ. I apply the blood of Jesus to your lips and I command you to choke on that blood right now. You choke on the blood of an innocent man. You stand in judgment before Jehovah God right now. I am not the one to enforce it. I'm just here to remind you of the legality of your offense. You have been found guilty in Jesus' name. I cast you out now. Every one of you demon spirits, go now. Every one of you go right now in Jesus' name. I command you all to go right now. Every spirit, every spirit of, of lust has to go right now in Jesus' name. Every spirit of pride, you have to go right now. Stubbornness, arrogance, slothfulness. Uh, every spirit of false humility, you go right now in Jesus' name. Every one of you go now in Jesus' name. I command it by the authority of Jesus Christ. Devil, get up, get out, you go now. Angels of the Lord, escort these demons right now straight into the pit of hell. I release them. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will bathe them in your righteousness. I pray that your peace will continue to flow inside of them. I pray that the Holy Spirit will baptize every one of these people and that you will fill up the vacancy that these demons have left. I command OCD, you will go now in Jesus' name. You are alive from hell. Every controlling spirit, I command you to go right now in Jesus' name. Every controlling spirit. Every spirit of rejection and rebellion, I command you to go now in Jesus' name. I uproot you and I command you to go. You will pull up every root, every egg, every seed. You will leave nothing behind. You will go now in Jesus' name. Go now, devil. Every one of you, up and out now. Holy Spirit, thank you for the redemptive work that you are doing in these people right now. You released somebody from neck pain just now. Somebody that neck pain was not, it was not in your spinal cord. It was not in your nerves. It was a demon spirit. And that demon spirit has just now released you. Your neck has been healed. You don't have to go to the chiropractor anymore. Um, there's someone coughing uncontrollably right now. That is a demon spirit. I command that demon spirit to get out of that person right now. You get out, devil. Quit the coughing. Get out of them right now. In Jesus' name, you release them and don't ever come back again. 
Fear, I cut you off in Jesus' name. You are not going to cause anyone in this room to be afraid of nothing. Perfect love drives out fear. And Jesus showed us perfect love when he came into our lives. He cut off all elements of fear. You are a lying spirit, fear. You must go now in Jesus' name. All right, Nelson, come back and see if the Holy Spirit's revealing you to catch anything that I missed. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Holy Ghost, begin to just, I just command every demon right now, up and out, up and out. Up and out in Jesus' name. Up and out in Jesus' name. Every demon, up and out. We just expose you under the light of God right now. Every thing, 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 every up and out in Jesus' name. Up and out. Up and out. Now, every demon. Right now. Up and out. Every demon. Up and out. Every demon. Right now. Every hidden thing. Up and out. Every demon. Right now. Every hidden thing. Right now. I even see a spirit. Right now. A spirit of adultery. Every spirit that's trying to cause someone to step into an affair. I bind you in the name of Jesus. Repent right now. I feel this strong. I feel we got 90 people watching. I feel someone you've yes, been flirting Spirit, around you with other people. Hey, uh, you spirit of affair. Out in Jesus' name. You spirit of adultery. Out in Jesus' name. Up and out, we expose you right now. That's you. You're gonna repent right now. Repent right now. Delete that contact off your phone right now. This is the warning of the Lord. Repent, repent, repent right now. Cut that person off. Stop flirting with them. Yes, in Cut Jesus it off. Name. This is the word of the Lord to you. Repent and cut it off. And now you spirit, get up yes. and out. out and go. You have to go. Up and out right now. Right now, I see yes, somebody sir. throwing up. Someone's gagging. I command that thing trying to hold up in there. Get up and get out of that house. Somebody's right sitting there and your knees are bouncing up and down. You might think it's restless leg syndrome. It's not. It's a demon spirit in your legs. Command it out. Put your hands on your knees and command them to get out in Jesus name. Take authority over them. Don't ask them. Command them to get out now in Jesus name. Shokosita, Kashada Yara Kasanda, Papa Yero Koshita, Padira Kasada Yara Kasanda, Papa Shito Kosita, Kashada. Come on, come on, come on right now. Every spirit of murder, every spirit of selfish, every spirit of suicide, every spirit of death. You come up and you come out. You listen to me right now. They shall live and not die. They shall live and not die, and they will declare the goodness of the Lord. You demon, come up and out right now. Up and out. Up and out, 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 devil, up and out. Every demon in Jesus' name, right now, the fire, Father, right now, we put the burning fire on every demon. More fire from heaven, fire from heaven, just keep coming, more fire, more fire, just burn them out, burn them out, devil. Burn out these demons right now, Jesus' name. The anointing breaks every yoke right now. The anointing breaks every yoke right now. Every demon coming up and coming out right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I see someone like something around your head right here, possibly the right side of your head. It's as if like something just trying to like, it feels like a tightness right there. You think it's like something behind your eye. I set you free from that right now. Amen. Amen. In We're in Jesus agreement. Name. I agree. In Jesus name. I set Claim you free. It. Any spirit attached to that, you leave them right now. Right now yes. in Jesus name. You know what I'm also seeing? I'm seeing somebody, they're concerned about their their grandma or their great grandma or someone that 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 probably suffers from dementia or some type of mental uh disorder and you're worrying about look at that yes i feel something in my temples look at that that's you Praise yeah. God. And so somebody who feels worried about a, a generational type of mental illness or dementia or what's that? What's that other thing where they forget stuff? Uh, dementia or Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's. That's what I was getting. Yeah. And so I command so every spirit, shut up, every curse up, that up, wants to bring up. Alzheimer's or bring dementia onto this mm. person's life. I break you off in Jesus name. You spirit of Alzheimer's, dementia, and we command you up and out of the right now. Up, 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 out in 
Jesus. Get out now, devil. Get out now. There is a demon taking the form of a bird and it's putting its its claws into the eyes and into the face. And I command you, devil, you spirit of bird, you get out of that head right now. You release that face. No more facial tics. No more, no more eyes twitching. You will get out of that person's face right now. I command it to go. I cut you off with the sword of the spirit. I cut you off in Jesus' name. Release that person right now in Jesus' name. Look at that. So that person said in their left temple... And, and so, see, that was a demonic assignment. Yes, Lord, we thank you for that person right now. We cut you off, devil. We cut you off. In oh, Jesus' God. name, we break that off of you. Uh, begin to just confess this. So you're going to say, I break that off. I disagree with yes. that lie. That will not happen to my eye. That will not happen. Devil, you have no right. Jesus is Lord over my eye. Jesus is Lord over my body, over my temple right here. And your temple. Right? Jesus is Lord in Jesus' name. Somebody said, I feel strongly Leviathan and a mocking spirit for several. Do you want to handle that okay. one? Leviathan, you are a spirit of pride, and we have come against you in Jesus' name. Daniel, you need to repent of any pride in you. And, and this, let me explain this about pride. Pride is not always arrogance. Pride also comes in a lot of us who have been kicked and beaten our whole lives. And when we survive it and we rise above it in our, in our maturity, we like to think, look what I did. I, 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 I did this. I conquered this. Everybody tried to destroy me, but I survived. It's mm. not you that did it. It's God that did it for you. Don't steal his pride from him. We have to constantly reprint a pride. We have to lay it at the feet of Jesus. Pride mm. is not good. It is mm. not good. We don't want it. And the devil will attach to it. Leviathan, I command you to release these people. Your pridefulness, we cut it off in Jesus' name, and we praise it with the truth of humility. And I pray for everyone who's who's fighting with you right now, Leviathan. I cut you off, and you know I have authority over you. I cut you off in Jesus' name, and I send you now to the pit of hell. Go. You go now, Leviathan. Release. You release right now, Leviathan. You go now in Jesus' name. Come on. Come on. Shake Rabashi Oh man, shake a Thank you, Lord. Yeah, Diamond, if you want, go ahead and lay hands on her right now. If she's downstairs and she's willing, yes, lay hands yes. on her. The same anointing right here. We just release it over you. We say you got the same Holy Spirit. Lord, anoint Diamond's hands right now for healing in Jesus' name. Use those hands to heal her fiance's mother in Jesus' name. Perform the miracle, Lord, I pray. In the name of Jesus. Cheyenne, I, I command the demon in your throat to release you right now. Devil, you will release Cheyenne's tongue. You will release her throat and you will get out of her mouth. I command you to vomit out of her mouth now. Cheyenne, grab you a trash can and put it under your chin because this demon's coming out now. Get you a trash bag or a trash can. Devil, I command you out of Cheyenne right now. You go, devil. You release her right now in Jesus' holy and precious name. I command it, devil. Up and out. Up and out. Out of her mouth now. You go now. And I command you to come up with vomit right now. Go, devil. Get out of Cheyenne's mouth. Come on. Come on. Jesus. Jesus. In Jesus' name. Jesus. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. So here's what we're going to do, guys. Let's. Darren, if you feel anything else, you can go ahead. Somebody said, I feel something in my head and I'm upset, frowning a lot. Yeah. Gabriel, I come. Gabrielle, I'm sorry. I come against these demon spirits in you in the name of Jesus. Devil, you know all authority has been given us and we collectively as a room, every one of us, we lift up Gabrielle right now. We command the devil to let go of her head. You will get out of her right now. Depression and sadness. You will go now. Get out of her right now. Jesus name. you are a lying spirit. You have been controlling and manipulating her her whole life. I command you out, devil. 
I also command every spirit of new age religion and every spirit of witchcraft. I command you out of Gabrielle's head. I command you to let go of her now. We break off all of the lies of your religion, all the lies of your demonic kingdom. We cut you off from that. You have to let her go. Get out now in Jesus' name. Yeah, I felt like the Lord was saying he was going to heal arthritis tonight. If you're watching right now, we have 91 people watching. Listen, if you have arthritis, I want you to lay hands where that arthritis is right now. Whether Amen. it's in your in your spot in your back, if, if, if it's in yeah. your fingers, I it's see good. somebody, it's in your hands. I see arthritis yeah. in your hands, in your joints. And I feel like the Lord is saying, I'm about to heal you right now in Jesus' name. Just put your hand where your pain is right now. The Lord's about to heal you. Holy Ghost, right now, deal with that spirit of arthritis come up and out come there, you get in out, Jesus' get name. Out, out, out of the hands, out, out, out of the out, shoulders, Jesus. out of the get elbows, out, out of the knees, get brand new knees get right out, now in Jesus' name. Oh, hey, Holy Ghost, touch them right now in Jesus' name. Holy Ghost, touch them right now in Jesus' name. The fire of God against that arthritis. Right now, I want you to begin to move your hand. Check if that was you. Check it and comment below if you were you healed. Do you want to hear about it? Yes, Lord Jesus, set them free. Set them free in Jesus' name. Set them free right now in Jesus' name. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, yeah. If there's something in your life right now, guys, that you know that the devil has a foothold on, right now we just told you about how to, how you how you confess your deliverance right and you say i break my agreement i sever this i repent of this i renounce this i don't want this in my life you're gonna confess those things guys right now and the holy ghost is here to heal you to deliver you to set you free in jesus name There's someone in the room that had a female in the room that has a spirit visiting you in your sleep. And sometimes it comes across as a male, sometimes as a female. You have incubus and succubus that are having relations with you. They're pinning you down and making it to where you can't breathe, making it to where you're scared. You can feel them at times touching your legs when you're trying to go to sleep. You are cut free right now in Jesus' name. Incubus and succubus, I cut you off of this dear woman right now in Jesus' name. We rebuke you, devil. You manipulated your way into her room. She doesn't want you. Repent and renounce this demon spirit. Repent and renounce it. Say, devil, I don't want you in my bedroom anymore. I don't want you touching me. I want nothing to do with you. Cut it off right now. Command this demon that it cannot visit you any longer. I assign angels of the Lord to your bedroom tonight. You are going to have a peaceful night tonight. These demons will not touch you tonight. Spirit spouses, you're going to quit trying to destroy marriages. We know. We see your handiwork. We see your fingerprints all over it. You're going to stop touching marriages right now, devil. You spirit spouses, we cut you off because you are lying spirits. These people have cut soul ties. They've cut off all soul ties in Jesus' name. You cannot torment them any longer. Every soul tie is cut. We, we command every part of that person that was planted another that they be retracted. And we command every person that doesn't want a soul tie that they reject the, the spirit or the seed of that person in them. No more sleep paralysis. No more. No more. No more, devil. No more. You're not going into the room any longer. You're not touching them any longer. These are children of God. He is going to protect them himself. You cannot touch them. Good job, Cindy. Keep trying to burp. Every time you burp, it just gets weaker and weaker. Just keep burping. Yeah, I can, I, I'm sensing something from the uh, lower right side of your spine going down to your right leg. 
I command that thing to come up and out right now. Every spirit behind this herniated disc and the sciatic nerve, I command you out. Any spirit wrapped around their spine, begin to unwrap right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You're going to unwrap from them and come up and out in Jesus' name. And right now that back is being healed. That leg is being healed in Jesus' mighty name. You're free right now. Just believe it, confess it, and just begin to worship. And I believe that that thing just unwrapped from your spine. And right now that pain in the lower back to the right side of your leg, be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, whenever you guys start having headaches or the neck pain, and, and you feel something in your throat, what you do is you put your hand over your chest up high because you don't want the demonic spirits to come back down into your body. So you're gonna just gradually push your hand up and say, I command you to go up and out. You're gonna get out of me now and keep praying it until they're gone completely, until your headache is released, until your neck pain is released, until your tongue is released, you keep praying. You are not coming back down, you're going out. Get out now in Jesus name. I felt the cold air in my face <laughs> when I blew. Amen. Holy Ghost, the wind. Amen. <laughs> yes, Jesus. Well, that's mm. what Jesus said when he went into the upper room after he rose from the dead. He came in through the door and he said to the disciples, my peace I give you. And he breathed on them his peace. Come on. <laughs> Beautiful, man. Yeah, he is breathing yeah, on man. all of you right now. He is breathing Jesus on all of you. To me. No breath. Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You got better <laughs> microphone. <laughs> glory, glory. What if the neck itches? Okay. Bura, baba, shake it. So here's here's what I want to do, Darren. I don't know if you feel. It, it, how, how you're feeling right now but i do want to say this i want um there there, there has to be a way um for people how, how can people re, uh connect with you how can people find you or follow you or you know i know you you do some stuff oh, on great. social media um so so yeah. here's what i want to do i want to go ahead and open that up for you to just go ahead and share how can the viewers uh find you yeah you can reach me on a new beginnings healing ministries on youtube or on facebook new beginnings mm. healing ministries and again mm. i'm located in allen texas which is just a little bit north of dallas on highway 75 but uh i do deliverance a lot so if there's anyone in the area um also you can reach out if you're uh, in another state we can try doing it over video uh, mm-hmm. i don't want to say try we will do it over video um, yeah whenever yeah. we can fit you into the schedule it's a little bit crazy right now but just be patient all right yeah yeah awesome and so um darren when you get when when, uh when you come off just go ahead and send me all the links to your youtube channel to your um i don't know if you want people on your facebook or uh yeah however you would get these these scheduled you're also on the deliverance map with isaiah saldivar right yes i am yes i am yeah so he's also on the deliverance map so guys there's a somebody said email is that a prefer is that a preferred way of contact email's great it's my full name darren k boyer at gmail so just put the letter k in my name there and you got it darren k boyer at gmail.com love to hear from you guys yeah and so guys i i obviously had darren on because i believe (laughs) in the anointing and the call on his ministry i do i know there's definitely um you know I, I came to you. I was the Holy Spirit was speaking to me about um, doing a doing a series, possibly on deliverance. And you yeah. know, I tried to avoid it. You know, <laughs> I kind of was keep because you'll be some, attacked. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know how it is. You know. <laughs> yeah. And then I said, okay. But then the Holy Spirit kept nudging me, right? And so then I said, okay, Lord, who do you want me to have on for us? And I immediately thought of you, man. And, and so I appreciate it. God's good. Yeah, man. And so I know that, you know, you've been really plowing the way. I know that, you know, listen, guys, to be a deliverance minister is not the easiest thing in the world. Right. Like it's it's a challenge. Yeah. It's, it takes time. It dedicates to people. Um, but, you know, I believe, man. And even Darren, if I could say this, I feel like I felt like the Lord was saying, like, he's about to promote you even more in the realm of the spirit, man. Like when you where you know, just right now, I feel like the Lord is saying, I'm about to elevate you into another realm of authority. Amen. I feel like Amen. God is I saying he's, it. he's about to release a breath of grace 
on the ministry, Amen. a breath of grace, meaning this is what I feel like he's saying. He's saying there's about to be an ease, a greater ease Amen. in deliverance on your life. <laughs> Amen. And I feel like that the Lord is good, doing man. it. I feel like the Lord is going to do this because he's going to give you more grace because of the time Amen. and because of the schedule. And so I feel like the Lord is saying he's about to promote you. He's going to give you an ease and a grace, man. Yeah. And I see such increase coming to your life, Darren. Um, and, yeah. and I believe the Lord is going to give you that place, man. He's going to give you a place. And so I bless I you, man. I appreciate it. And I believe it. Come on. Yeah, I'm Come on. This for you. There you go. Sure. So, guys, I'm going to go ahead and um, post uh, the so his, his the name of his ministry is New Beginnings Healing Ministries, and we're gonna have the links all in the description, guys. Yeah. Um, go ahead and tell us what what are you guys feeling right now? Somebody said I feel so light. I'm being serious, like something really left me. Praise God, uh, guys. If you want to email your testimonies, you can email them at revivalistnelson at gmail.com, or you can email Darren directly and just testify Amen. to him, guys. There's freedom. Look at Cindy. She said, yes, I'm free. She was Amen, she was manifesting Cindy. all kinds of stuff all night. God yeah. is setting her free. Somebody said, I completely feel free. Praise God. Amen. Guys, this is what we're called to do. The replay Amen. is going to be available, guys. We're going we're gonna to keep this up. You guys can go back. That mass deliverance prayer is going to be available. Some of you, um, you know, you begin to experience some partial deliverance. And, and, and guys, you can go back and watch that. And replay it and replay it and replay it. Mm -hmm. I know that I, I got delivered through a video that way once where I was watching mass deliverances and the mm -hmm. anointing was so thick on it that I kept getting like every time I just kept replaying it and deliverance was breaking out on me. And so, guys, yeah. this this is available for you guys. This is possible for you guys. Um, Darren, anything you want to share, man, before you head out? No, just just keep saying your prayers every night. Keep keep denouncing, renouncing confessing, repenting. You just don't want to take any opportunity, any chance of catching something you don't need because they're hard to get rid of once you get them in there because they hide so well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so keeping yourself free, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Darren, I'm going to be doing a, a series on this. Um, are you open to coming back again? <laughs> of course. This is fun, man. This is what we live for. Come on, come on. Guys, go ahead and type a one down below if you want Darren to come back. <laughs> hey, if you could, show that, that one video of a okay. guy. This one, one right guy, here? Because this would be a good one to send me off with. Okay, so guys, we're going to show you a video of one more deliverance before he heads out. And uh, we may, I may stick around a little bit for an after party. People like the after parties go. that I do. <laughs> I appreciate it. And it's so great to gonna... meet you all. I look forward to seeing you all again. Absolutely. So let's go ahead and play this out. And then, uh, and then we'll go. Everybody's giving you a one, man. They want you back. <laughs> oh, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. I look forward to it. <laughs> Absolutely. So let's go ahead and watch this out real quick, guys. I feel like that guy has been there for so long. He's trying to tell me that what are you going to do after I'm gone? Mm. That I need him. You're going to thrive in the power of the Holy Spirit. Just You're in your ministry to the Lord Jesus. That is your commitment. That's your calling. Yes. Yes, you don't need him, so you need to tell him you. to go. You have to say, I don't, I don't want you. you, devil. I don't want you, devil. I don't want you ever again. I don't want you ever again. I command you to go. I command you to go. And never return. And never return. You are defeated. You are defeated. And by the authority of Jesus Christ. And by the authority of Jesus Christ. Authority of Jesus Christ. By the 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 authority of Jesus Christ. I command you to go. By the authority of Jesus Christ, I command you to go. By the authority of Jesus Christ, you have to go. You have to go. By the authority of Jesus Christ, you have to go. By the authority of Jesus Christ, you have to go. By the authority of Jesus Christ, you have to go. By the authority of Jesus Christ, you have to go. By the authority of Jesus Christ, you have to go. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. In Jesus' name. Yes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I love Complete it when the peace, peace falls right over the person. Just bathe him in your peace. Yeah, man. Bathe it's him amazing. in your peace. Oh, Jesus. Left him up to be. <laughs> that is awesome. Now, that, was the, that was the last minute and a half of about seven or eight hours of deliverance. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And this guy was a minister. Yeah, he, he was spirit filled, 
speaking in tongues, evangelizing for 38 years. Wow, man. Yeah. So praise God. Well, man, guys, Thanks for being wait. a blessing, man. <laughs> Absolutely. Guys, that was awesome. <laughs> Darren, thank you so much hey. for all the, you know, the wisdom you shared. I mean, just amazing, man. Just the years of experience. And, and it's just amazing, man, that what God is doing in your life. It's amazing that after 28 years of ministry, the Lord just had grace on you, lit you up on fire. And now, man, now it's God, now the amazing. devil's going to the devil's going to pay, man. Big time. Yeah. <laughs> Revival's coming. Revival's coming. Come on. Come on, man. So, guys, right. the links are all going to be in the description. How to yes. connect with Darren. Um, Darren, we also want to bless you, man. So, guys, Amen. so tonight we're going to we're going to bless Darren. He's working hard. He's doing the work of the kingdom and a worker is worthy of his pay. So we're going to bless uh, Darren by the end of this podcast, guys. So Amen. feel free to sew. The links are in the description to do that. Darren, Thank you, sir. I'll let you go, man. I'm going to stick around with these right, guys man. for a little bit. We'll talk again, uh, we'll have a if not later night. tonight, tomorrow. All right. Have, have a great Easter. <laughs> Come on. Bless you, man. Praise God, guys. That was amazing. That was amazing. That was amazing. Oh, man. <laughs> so, guys, if you were blessed by that tonight, can you go ahead and comment below and tell us how blessed you were? Can you just tell us how blessed you were last night? Uh, tonight, uh, just tell me what 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 did God do to you guys tonight? What 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 did you take out of tonight? I'm gonna go ahead and read some of your comments. I also want to go ahead and uh, open it up, guys. We I really want to want to bless our guests tonight, guys. Uh, go ahead and you know the links are in the description. If you guys want to give, I'll go ahead and put it down below for you guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. Hopefully, it blessed you, it impacted you, and touched your life. Uh, if you're new to this channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you get notified with some of our future videos. Every Friday night, we have something called the Glory Podcast, where we invite those who are walking in the realms of the glory, and we dig and ask questions about what it looks like to live in the glory, to walk in the glory, and to be in the glory and release the glory into a generation. Here in this channel, we're all about um, pushing forward this glory revival movement that is happening in these last days. We are about raising up a generation of glory revival carriers. We believe that you are one of those glory revival carriers. Join us in this movement of the Holy Spirit uh, to awaken a generation to carrying the glory into the world as we prepare for the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Subscribe and watch some of these other videos suggested to you and enjoy. God bless you. Thank you for watching.